유전자 조작은 크게 세 단계로 진행된다. 효소를 사용해 특정 유전자를 분리해낸 후 그것을 플라스미드라는 중간 운반체에 실어 전혀 다른 종의 유전자들 속에 이식하는 일련의 과정을 통해 이제껏 존재하지 않았던 새로운 형질의 생명체를 만들어낸다. 이 기술에 따라 차가운 바닷물 속에 사는 넙치의 유전자는 딸기 속으로 들어간다. 그리고 그 딸기는 냉해에 잘 견디는 성질을 갖게 된다. 제초제의 저항력을 가진 땅속 박테리아의 유전자는 콩 속으로 들어가 제초제 저항성 콩을 탄생시킨다. 그러나 화려해 보이는 성과의 이면에는 그에 못지않은 위험성이 내포되어 있다는 것이 유전자 before conception. In group A, she fed the rats no soy products. In group B, she fed them soy flour, and in group C, she fed them genetically engineered soy flour. Then came part two of the experiment. This time, there were just two groups of three rats. Let's call them group D and group E. In group D, she fed the rats food with no soy products. In group E, she fed them genetically engineered soy flour. So in total, group A and group D ate no soy products, and those rats gave birth to 44 babies. Group B ate regular soy flour, and those rats gave birth to 33 babies. Group C and Group E ate genetically engineered soy flour, and those rats gave birth to 45 babies. Well, that sounds normal. Well, three weeks later, the results were a little shocking. In the group with no soy at all, three baby rats died. In the groups with regular soy, three baby rats died. But in the groups who ate genetically engineered soy flour, 25 baby rats died. According to Dr. Ermakova, the reason why this is a problem is because the biochemical structure of rats is very similar to the biochemical structure of humans. The studies done on other animals resulted in precancerous cell growth, smaller brains, livers, and testicles, damaged immune systems, liver malfunctions, lesions in the liver, stomach, and kidneys, inflammation of certain organs, cell malfunctions, higher blood sugar levels, fertility problems, and unexplained increases in death rate.